Like in the concept art of the hostage chapter, the scene was entirely set in daylight. It was changed to night time at the last minute because developers thought it looked cooler. Very early on it's believed Emma's mother was supposed to be dead or could die. Emma's mom originally didn't get escorted, with Connor having the option of analyzing her and find bruises on her. Originally, there was a sequence where Connor investigated the bathroom for clues in this chapter. It was scrapped because the majority of test players didn't even notice the bathroom to start. Daniel was originally a VS400 model, meant to resemble the Irish actor Joss Van Tyler. However, he was later changed to a PL600 model as well as his appearance once Ben Lambert took the role. The model was later used for a waitress-type android that Marcus can convert in Freedom March. Daniel's voice would become distorted when saying, You lied to me, Connor. You lied to me. There's unused dialogue of Emma begging for mercy. There is unused audio of Caroline crying which would occur if Emma died. Connor could sacrifice himself by getting pushed off the building, as well as also being able to push Daniel off the edge and survive. When threatening Daniel by using the gun, Connor could have the choice to shoot the deviant in the shoulder or aim for his head. Connor also had the choice of grabbing Emma or grabbing Daniel's gun instead. Files regarding Anthony Descartes imply that he was originally an old friend of Gavin's. It is possible that Daniel would have been able to survive in this chapter, as shown by some concept art, though such is not confirmed. A trailer shows Connor deactivating his own skin. This is never seen in the actual game. Captain Allen was supposed to have a much bigger role in Connor's story. There are unused washer robots, implying that the game originally intended to show androids that weren't human or animal. An early trailer shows a female RK200 model, Marcus model. Earlier trailers suggest that Kara would be more of a traveler as opposed to a mother. There's an unused chapter where Marcus would explore Carl's neighborhood. Marcus had originally a different model and was supposed to be just a store-bought android. However, he was later changed to be an RK model like Connor. There's an unused android who would appear at the paint shop instead of the Jerry's model. Early on Alice was intended to be a mute character. Kara would communicate with her via sign language. This was used to teach basic American Sign Language. Ultimately this was later on scrapped and in the final game Alice has an actual voice. Todd's house was originally bigger. Leo originally wore sunglasses. Marcus could originally keep his uniform. If Connor takes his blood sample while Hank is interacting with another officer or not facing Connor. Hank does not react or even seem to notice what he's doing regardless of whether the sample is taken from the carpet or the knife. But if you look at the knife any other situation, Hank will get grossed out and Connor will apologize. In Partner's chapter, there's unused dialogue of the news playing regarding Connor's encounter with Daniel, the dialogue would change based on how the events played out. Such as whether or not Emma was saved and whether or not Connor died. Some customers would react to the news either praising Connor or criticizing him. This would explain Hank's later dialogue if Connor dies again in certain scenes, with Hank mentioning every time he died or calling him immortal despite not being around for the hostage situation. In the final game, this is a continuity error. There was originally an option to leave Carlos Android hidden after he begs Connor not to tell the police. But it was scrapped because they felt it would work better if Connor didn't have the option because he wasn't close enough to deviancy yet. If you become deviant when Todd is heading upstairs, Kara will still get the objective to protect Alice, but instead views Todd heading upstairs and the option to reason with Todd is removed. It is possible to have Todd kill Alice and blame Kara as a deviant. If Hank protected Connor in the interrogation, he is supposed to have unlocked a dialogue, thanks, but due to a bug it's permanently locked. Rosanna Cartland reports that Do Humans Dream of Mammalian Sheep, the first book ever written by an AI named Voltaire, has recently been published and become a bestseller.
The book titled A Human's Dream of Mammalian Sheep is a reference to Philip K. Dick's sci-fi classic The Android's Dream of Electric Sheep. Some players believe that the highway chase in this chapter may have been based on a piece of concept art from Heavy Rain, one of Quantic Dream's previous titles. The concept art shows Ethan Mars being chased across a highway by Norman Jaden. This chase was not in the final game, so some believe the idea may have been repurposed to create the chase with Kara and Connor. According to concept artist Antoine Bouton, the Kara and Alice in the Streets sequence was supposed to be significantly longer. On the Run and Jericho share the train station model. If you read AX400 Getaway, during the Slatko memory recall scene, it confirms that the train station that Kara and Alice flee to in on the run is Ferndale Station. This is most likely a developer oversight, as on the run takes place in the Ravendale district, not Ferndale. The Nest chapter bears a few similarities to the chapter, Nathaniel, from another Quantic Dream game Heavy Rain. Both Rupert and Nathaniel have symbols of their spiritual beliefs written on the walls, Ra 9 for Rupert and Jesus Christ for Nathaniel. Both Connor and Norman Jaden first knock on the door before their partners decide to kick the door down. North's past role becomes obvious when the Eden Club chapter happens, as she has the same underwear as the Tracy androids on under her sweater. If Kara still has her uniform and has her memory erased in Slatko episode, her name will not show up on her uniform until she regains her memory. It is possible for the polar bear android to exit the mansion alive if you open its cage and set fire or fail the last QTE if you start the chase. At the end of this chapter, the players originally had the option to not take Luther. This chapter bears a few similarities to the chapter, The Dock, from another Quantic Dream game Heavy Rain. Both Madison Page and Kara are restrained and have to find a way to escape or else they can die. Kara being reset or killed if she fails to dodge Slatko's shotgun blasts while being chased and Madison being killed if she doesn't escape or loses the fight with Adrian Baker. Also, the fight between Kara and Slatko resembles the fight between Ethan Mars and Brad Silver in the chapter, The Shark, since the two protagonists are hunted down with a shotgun. Both Slatko and Adrian can be left alive without being punished, leaving them as Kama Houdinis but Kara can't escape without Slatko dying. In Russian Roulette chapter, if you look closely at Hank's whiskey bottle in the kitchen, it is the exact same brand of whiskey Ethan Mars can find during the Lizard chapter in Heavy Rain. Black Lamb, Malt Scotch Whiskey. Some concept arts of Pirate's Cove depicts a chase scene which Final Game doesn't include. Apparently, in this chapter, the park was going to be raided after Alice rides the carousel, and a chase scene would start. But, it was cut out, maybe due to the overabundance of opportunities for Kara to die and, therefore, end her storyline. There is some cut audio in the game files reveals that in that scene, some boys would arrive to attack the Jerrys at the park. Also a unused pickup truck with a spotlight can be found and some human ped models can be found out of bounds on the map, which is mostly likely part of the removed event. The group could die in this chapter, in addition Luther was also able to die in this chapter which would lead to Alice later on confiding in Kara about how she missed Luther. This would impact on Midnight Train and an exclusive mid credit scene would be triggered if Kara died in that chapter. The coat Marcus is wearing before heading to Stratford Tower is in fact the same, Vita, coat he picked up at Solid Waste Landfill. He lost it in the pool upon entering Jericho. It seems he did go back to retrieve it after all. It is possible that Josh was not scripted to be in the Stratford Tower chapter until much later in production, after alternate models had been finalized. As Josh is the only one of the four not to have a proper disguise. When analyzing the roof edge in Public Enemy Chapter, two mini scenes can play depending on Connor's previous choices, if he never fell during the game he'll look over the edge calm and collected. But if he fell from a height in the hostage or the nest, 
he'll have a more fearful reaction. When Connor returns in Kamsky chapter, Hank greets him saying, still a mortal ha, huh? Connor, which is Hank's reaction if Connor has died more than once. Even if Connor's first death happened in the hostage and Hank has only witnessed one other death. Therefore, Hank should have had no idea he could come back. The total number of androids that join Marcus in Freedom March is 476. One of the Axe 400, Kara, models that Marcus can call to join the Deviant Marches is seen pushing a stroller. The two people next to this Kara model look like the parents of Oliver that you see at the bus terminal while playing as Kara in Battle for Detroit. They're likely just a reuse of the same character model. In Last Chance Connor, Daniel can show two different reactions when being reactivated. If Connor shot him or tricked him, he'll accuse Connor of lying to him and wish karma on Connor. However oddly enough if Daniel shot Connor, he'll panic upon reactivation and apologize for killing Connor, admitting that he was wrong. This chapter is very similar to Norman Jaden's chapter, Solving the Puzzle, from another Quantic Dream game Heavy Rain. Both Connor and Norman have to use the evidence they gathered to find a location to solve the cases they were both assigned to do. Both Connor and Norman can die if they spend too much time looking through evidence, using Ari for too long for Jaden and Connor being deactivated if time runs out. Both Connor and Norman have a final interaction with the person who doesn't like them that much, Carter Blake for Norman and Gavin Reed for Connor. Considering the Jericho raid in the previous chapter, the Night of the Soul chapter is a reference to the Night of Broken Glass which was a pogrom against Jews in Nazi Germany. This chapter takes place on November 10th. This is the date that the massacre took place on in 1938, 100 years ago exactly. Some concept arts of Woodward Church depicts a shootout scene which final game doesn't include. Apparently, in this chapter, humans were going to raid the church after deviants take refuge in, and both sides would engage in a shootout. If the player chooses the violent path for Marcus where he assaults Recall Center N5, it will share many similarities to Nat Turner's Slave Rebellion in 1831. In both timelines, November 11th concludes both stories with Turner being hanged and Marcus potentially dying or winning the battle. Both were also on the run for a considerable amount of time with Marcus hiding in Jericho and Turner hiding in caves. At the beginning of the, Connor at the Cyberlife Tower, path, two Cyberlife agents escort Connor to the elevator. When they approach the entrance of the tower, the security system checks their identity. One of the agents is called, Agent 47 Inches. This is most probably a reference to Agent 47 from the Hitman series. At the beginning of the, Kara leaving Detroit, path, it is possible to pass a cinema referencing past Quantic Dream games. The cinema itself is named, The Celsius, Fahrenheit. Heavy Rain is one of the movies being played. To Infinite and Beyond, is another movie being played, Beyond, Two Souls. The name of the movie is most probably a reference to the famous catchphrase of Buzz Lightyear from Toy Story franchise. And, a movie entitled, Nomad Soul, can be seen on the board, Omicron, the Nomad Soul. The mechanic of Kara calling out to Alice when they become separated in the recall center, determinant on whether or not the pair get captured, is similar to how Ethan Mars can call out to his son. Jason. When they become separated in the chapter, the mall, in the Quantic Dream game Heavy Rain. Marcus fighting Connor is very similar to the fight between playable characters Norman Jaden and Scott Shelby in the chapter, The Old Warehouse, from another Quantic Dream game Heavy Rain. The only difference between the fights is the player gets to choose who to control whereas in Heavy Rain, Norman can win by completing the QTEs or lose by failing the QTEs. So only one character can win or lose depending on the player's choices.